So this is um, more great work from More Perfect Union. They're going to talk about how Uber and Lyft are robbing their workers. Take a look. For $7? Wow. That's going to take me an hour just to shop for that alone. In Massachusetts, gig companies are trying to legalize a system that robs workers of basic rights. No minimum wage, paid leave, or ability to unionize in an effort to pad their own pockets. Because the income is so low, it's destroyed my life. Even though the state has some of the strongest labor protections in the country, gig companies skirt the law by treating their workers as contractors instead of employees. Being a first-time independent contractor, the expenses were very heavy. It took almost 50% of everything I made just to pay my expenses. After working an entire week and then calculating my expenses, I would go home with literally maybe three to $400 after working uh, you know, 40 to 50 hours a week. The working conditions are not great. As a woman, I've been sexually harassed. Um, I've had to deal with racist passengers. We get no benefits whatsoever. No medical family leave, no vacation time, no sick pay, no fuel reimbursement, no toll reimbursements, pretty much everything, you know, health insurance, nothing. And now those companies are getting ready to spend millions on a ballot initiative that will make this misclassification permanent. There's a new battle brewing over the gig economy here in Massachusetts. If this all sounds familiar, that's because it's happened before. Last year, gig companies spent $210 million getting Proposition 22 passed in California, making it the most expensive ballot initiative in history. Despite their claims that Prop 22 would prevent price increases, every single company that backed the initiative has raised their prices since it passed. At the same time, the gig companies actually decreased their rates for drivers. The minimum wage promised by Prop 22 only applies to what the companies call engaged time, from the time they've accepted a job until they've completed it. This means companies don't pay workers for approximately one third of the time they're on the apps, either waiting for new customers or returning from long distance trips, an effective wage of $10.45 before deducting expenses, resulting in $5.64. Prop 22 passed. Drivers got getting less money and passengers are paying more. So everything you just said that would happen if Prop 22 didn't pass is happening now. Now they're bringing their playbook to Massachusetts. The companies have filed to put their anti-worker bill on the ballot, but they won't be able to pass it without a fight. We want to be able to have paid sick leave. We want to be able to have workman's comp. We want to be able to have unemployment insurance. We want to be able to have those basic protections that all other workers in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts are able to have. These companies need to follow the law. They need to respect the worker. They need to pay a living wage. They are trying to Uberize our economy, and that's what we are trying to prevent. This isn't just about your Uber driver, your DoorDash driver, the person that picks up your food and delivers your groceries to your house. If they can get away with this in Massachusetts, it'll be coming to a state near you. So this is quite the scam if you think about it. It's basically, a good way to think about it is like, this is anti-unionization. It's the polar opposite of unionizing. Unionizing is when you collectively bargain, you band together with your brothers and sisters who are also workers, and you all, whatever one does, you all do. So you could strike and demand more, and then they have to negotiate with you. And there are protections for, for unions. Now this is like, the exact opposite of unionization, because with this scam, it's a, it's really a brilliant scam if you think about it, it's evil genius. They say, oh, you're not an employee of our company, you're an independent contractor. Now people hear that, they oh, I want to be an independent contractor, it sounds like I have more autonomy and more freedom and all that stuff. No. What they've done is created this uh, legal categorization of independent contractor, which exempts you from any of the labor protections that would come with being an employee. And so they explained it there, that, you know, you don't get uh, the paid time off, for example. You don't get access to unemployment insurance if you get laid off. Um, and in Massachusetts, they have some of the best labor protections in the country, but it ha it's for employees. And if you're not categorized as an employee, you don't get any of the protections. So there might be overtime rules associated uh, with being an employee. Again, paid time off. Um, there's a lot of benefits of being an employee because you're treated more like a human being if you're an employee. If you're an independent contractor, they, you know, you don't have any of those protections. 
And then also they did like they did this thing in California, as they explained there. And, you know, they tried to do the $15 an hour thing, but they made a giant loophole. So you're not really making $15 an hour. So it, the independent contractor thing is just a giant scam. And it's a scam for the workers to get screwed and for the company to more or less rob these people blind. And so they're trying to, as they describe, Uberize the economy everywhere. And if we don't nip it in the bud here, it could take over the entire country. And this is, this is the gig economy in action. You don't have the same kind of protections that jobs previously had uh, in this country. You don't have, you know, you can't really build a life around the kind of wages that these people are earning. And we got to band together against it. So yes, they need to slap down this law. Again, I think it's a direct vote maybe that's happening on it. It was in California and the propaganda worked and it passed. Um, and I think that, uh, these are going to keep popping up all over the place. We got to slap down these laws. We got to slap down the so-called right to work laws, which are just right to work for less. What we really need is the $15 minimum wage nationally. And we need the pro act, which is a pro union piece of legislation, which would drastically help workers. Um, but look out, these scams are getting more and more sophisticated, man. And, uh, credit to more perfect union for breaking it down in detail. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.